Hello, we're back. We're going to do a quick review of the Sunstar DC powered 24 volt refrigerator. It's model number ST16RF. Let's get to it. So this is the Sunstar refrigerator. It's actually refrigerator freezer combo. And uh, again, very, very thick walls all around, nice and deep. Uh, the unique thing about this is each compartment is controlled separately. Uh, so you could actually shut one compartment down, but we'll walk around back and take a look at what's back there to see how it works. So this is kind of unique. It has a top compressor and a bottom compressor. So you can run the sections separately. You can run them together. You can make one a freezer, one a fridge, both of them a refrigerator, or you can shut an entire section down. So it's, it's really convenient, very energy efficient. It runs off of uh, 24 volt DC. You can run it off of 12 also, but we're running off of 24 volt DC. And uh, here it is, no plug in. You gotta go direct to DC, kinda nice. Another type of DC connector we're using is an XT60 for the higher power items. This is for the refrigerator. I'll use it for the freezer too. They also have an XT90 for even higher power and amperage, but the XT60 seems to work just fine for this application. Well, for those of you who know us, we never review anything until we've used it for a while. So we thought we would hold off on this review until we got through a few months. It's been four months. We're living off grid on a 24 volt solar powered system and we have a family of seven in the house. Now, that's not counting our son who's off in college and abandoned us on this endeavor. In any event, uh, first off, we do like the size of the refrigerator. It's plenty for our family. It's comparable to what we used to have before when we had an AC powered refrigerator, a big box store type of refrigerator. And uh, now this has a lot thicker insulation in it. Uh, the other great thing is, when it first arrived, the door was on the other side, and it was real quick and easy to switch it to this side. Uh, no big deal on that. In fact, my wife did it. I was out. She did it. I came back. It was done. The only issue was when you switch the door, you have these holes on the top. You can go to the hardware store and buy these little plugs that will go in there. Uh, I think these are uh, either stainless or galvanized, but they plug right in there to to close up those holes. Another issue we had was when we first got it and we would shut the door, it would see, it would, you would hear a sucking sound and that door was locked. It was stuck shut and uh, if you pulled it, it would actually move the refrigerator. Now that's gotten better over time. It's not nearly that bad anymore, but you might have to wait a few seconds for that suction to go away before you can open it again, but no big deal. It, it kind of went away and alleviated itself. Uh, we do like the fact that you can separately set the freezer in the refrigerator because with a family of seven in an unconditioned structure, not even a house yet, uh, the kids were in and out opening that all the time in a very humid environment, and we had to defrost it pretty quickly after getting it. So let's take a look at how we did that. We are doing the first defrost of our freezer and I just took everything out. I've got the light tape shut so the light's not on. We're gonna get some of that frost off there. The back seems to be fine, but the top and the sides are pretty bad uh, and there's ice in the bottom. So we'll try to get all that out of there and then reload it. Well, the defrost is complete. All the ice is out of it and it only took an hour. We essentially Empty the freezer and let it all melt. You just turn it off right here. You go to zero and that turns the top compressor off. This refrigerator has two different compressors uh, and totally separate compressors. So there's a top one and a bottom one. So you turn this off and the refrigerator keeps going. Now this manual defrost, people typically do it twice a year. I probably do it a little bit more because when that ice builds up on the side, the freezer is less efficient. So we wanted to get rid of that. And the other thing is, it started frosting over this knob and my fear was I wouldn't be able to turn it off uh, to get it to defrost. But it's not a lot of work at all. 
And like I said, it took an hour and now we'll just load it back up. Well, we'll cool it down first and then we'll load it back up and it's done. So those of you who notice, we grow our own food normally, but in the process of selling out and building this house, we didn't really get a garden going. What we did get going didn't do so great. So we've been purchasing a lot of stuff from the grocery store, which actually means we use the refrigerator a little bit more because normally we just have leftovers in there. But let's take a look inside real quick. And uh, the control is right here. And when you get it, it tells you to set it between four and five and see how it does. We put a thermometer in there and checked it after we did that. This is the light switch. The light's plenty bright, at, you know, during the day at night, it's plenty bright to see everything. Good space in the door here. And these are very sturdy shelves, unlike those pop in, pop out shelves that, that kind of crack and rattle around. These are very sturdy and there's different sizes. So you can put your tall stuff on the bottom and your short stuff up top. Uh, they got a crisper drawer down here, uh, plenty of room in that. And we have not noticed significant condensation around the side, slight condensation on the back, but up here there is a fan and the fan is super quiet. You don't hear it at all, but that fan keeps the temperature pretty consistent throughout and it also keeps condensation out of there. So, uh, so far I'm very happy with the performance of the refrigerator. So the big question, we bought this specifically because it had a low power footprint and the question is, does it? Well, I have to say it works as advertised. If you go to Sunstar, they have a specification sheet online and it has a little table and it shows data at 70 degrees or 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Well, we live in a house that's currently got no air conditioning, no heat, and no insulation. So our temperatures went between, well, 70 and 90, I'd say. Uh, even up around 95 sometimes. But uh, it did fall within the parameters. Now, the way we're operating is freezer on top, refrigerator on bottom, and that table includes all sorts of combinations. This is off, that's off, this is fridge, whatever. But the way ours is configured, uh, it uses about 400 watt hours per day at 70 degrees. It's supposed to use around 730 watt hours per day at 90 degrees. And we always fell within those parameters. It's also supposed to operate between about 40 and 110 watts when the compressors are running. If one's running, obviously it's lower. If two are running, it's higher. Well, I just seconds ago checked with the amp lamp here and I was drawing about 2.5 to five amps, which is around 50 watts. And generally when that second compressor kicks on, it jumps up to around 100 watts. So I would have to say Sunstar did a great job building it and their spec sheet is pretty much right on, at least how we're operating it. And uh, we have a lot of kids opening this thing during the day, so it's pretty good. Well, that concludes our review. Uh, two things I can't comment on. One is tech support because I had no issues. And the other thing is the uh, troubleshooting guide in the back. Well, I didn't have any trouble. So everything worked as advertised and uh, we love it. We also love the fact that we have uh, some subscribers that send us in comments. We like to read those. Some of those are pretty funny. If you haven't subscribed, please join us in our journey. And I'm going to finish off with a nice cold drink.